know how to find this recording. This will all be new to me. So everyone, this is Anna Simone. She graduated uh, two years ago in 2019 from Upper Marion, went to St. Joe's, uh, and that's actually where I went. I graduated there 26 years ago. Um, so actually, I, I hadn't been back for years, Anna, and I just went, about a year ago, I went, and I didn't recognize the campus. Uh, really? Yeah. The, well, I played baseball there, and mm -hmm. we, used to have to tr we used to have to trek up to Norristown to Latchaw McCarthy Field, which is a terrible oh, wow. uh, field for Division I baseball. It was mm -hmm. all, I mean, it was, we constant, I felt like we constantly played away games because we never played anywhere near campus. Mm -hmm. And then we had to, our practices were actually over in East Falls. We had to cross over uh, the school kill. That's crazy. And uh, we were constantly just driving school vans. Like, you know, as a student, I was driving a van. I was driving uh -huh. other students. I, I don't know what the liability on that would be today, but back 25 years ago, you know, we would, we would fly to Florida uh -huh. to play Florida teams. It was such a, a, a nickel and dime operation. And, you know, we'd get off the plane and we'd rent vans and the upperclassmen would be driving the lower classmen all around Florida for baseball games, which is not... Yeah, that's right, a little that's crazy. <laughs> so you are you are not in you're not uh, in, in the in the uh, in the dorm. You're at uh, your own yeah. apartment somewhere. Yes, I live off campus in Maniunk. Oh, you're in Maniunk. Yes. So those of you who don't know, Maniunk is uh, Saint Joe's doesn't have much of a nightlife scene around it. Uh, no, it everybody does not. Goes, everybody goes to Maniunk when they want to go out. Uh, yes. Just saying. Uh, I guess, what should we talk about? Do you normally get up this early in college? Um, I normally like, just naturally wake up at like eight o'clock, like eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But I know some of my like classmates, they sleep until like 11, 12, because they don't have class till one or two in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, that's my homeroom too. They, they wake up, they, they sign in, they wake up about 11. Right, guys? Thumbs up. <laughs> Great, and thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, so... Um, when's your first class? So my first class starts on Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedules. It starts at 1220 in the afternoon, but my oh two, God. yeah, but oh like, God. it's so nice. And then yeah. I finish by 215 and then my Tuesday, Thursday schedule, I start at 11 and end at 445. So I have three classes. Oh, that's your rough day, huh? Mm -hmm. But Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 to 215. That's a tough yeah and, uh, it's a lot I, I tell everybody college is kind of on your own mm -hmm. you go in there you get you get a lecture you take a couple notes and then you do a lot of reading and figure stuff out on your own which yes uh, I, I loved I you know I didn't particularly like high school um, which mm -hmm. I know sounds crazy since I'm a teacher but uh, the guy homeroom the, the goal of high school is to get out remember that yes for sure college is so I different kinda, I say that half joking. Um, so uh, I ask everybody this, did you feel prepared? And you don't have to lie, do you feel prepared coming out of Upper Marion, going to St. Joe's? Um, not really. Academically, yes. Like I was fine for like the workload, especially since I took AP classes, like that was a lot to begin with. But in other ways, like really no, just I know for me, like financing and budgeting, like wasn't taught in high school. And I wish like that was a requirement in school because you go right. into college and you're like, well, oh, I have to pay for textbooks. I have to pay for a parking pass. If you drive, you just have to manage your money because a lot of freshmen don't have jobs their first year. So you just have to figure out how to, where to spend your money and how to save your money at the same time. And the other thing I wish that Upper Marion spent a little bit more time on was student loans and when to pay them off and how to pay them off correctly. And yeah, that was just my biggest takeaway from my yeah, first year. I, I didn't pay off. Uh, well, I had a lot of loans for grad school. I didn't undergrad. I, I, I didn't, but uh, mm -hmm. for, grad, for grad school, I had to take out a lot of loans. I didn't pay them off till I was 31. And, mm -hmm. That day I sent that last check in, man, I partied that night. It was like a, a big weight <laughs> off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. In fact, I, when I was your age, you know, I'd get a credit card. And when you get a credit card, guys, you get these access checks that attach to your credit card. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I, the bill would come due on one credit card. So I would open up another credit card and use the access check from credit card B to pay off credit card A. And then when credit card B, the bill is due, I use the access check for credit card A. And, you know, I, I thought I was a smart guy back then, but uh, that, that's, a, that's a bad move. Um, it, just, it just gets you further into debt. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how's the food work in college? Um, food. So I had a dining plan the first year at St. Joe's. The food is so bad. Like they made it better, but it was not, it's not that good. Mm -hmm. But it's very strange because my body was like used to eating at certain times. And then I had class then. So then you just have to figure out when to eat. And another big thing is like, don't forget to eat because a lot of like students just forget to eat since they're overloaded with like school and stuff like that. So just taking care of yourself is super important. Yeah. I mean, I, I can only talk to, I, I want to talk about my college experience because it was the same school, but we our our dining plan is you, I, it cannot be this way today, but our, our dining plan back, um, back in the nineties was you got so many meals per week. Mm -hmm. I think it was, I think it was 19 meals a week. If you think about a seven day week, that's seven times three is 21. You got a 19 meal. The, the idea was you'd probably eat on your own twice a week. Mm -hmm. You would scan in to the food part of the cafeteria mm -hmm. and you got a tray and whatever you put on your tray, that was your meal. Oh. Like, so if you, you, you could have put 34 donuts on your tray and, and walked out and that was your meal. Or you could have put, uh, uh, you know, eight slices of pizza and mm -hmm. then you just scan out and it counted as one meal, at, which was ridiculous because I think it led to a lot of like eating problems. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had a, I had a roommate, you know, he later failed out because uh, he, 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 he partied a little too much, but I had a roommate. He would go in there and get like a dozen donuts and walk in 10 minutes late to his eight o'clock English class and just start passing out donuts, which led to, I think, his dismissal from college. But um, I, th I think by now it's got to be where you just, you get charged. It, it can't be that way. I'm, I'm, there's no way. I mean, for us, there was like two meal plans that you could have gotten. It was like an unlimited one, which meant that you could go in how often you wanted, but obviously wow. you paid extra for that. Or the other one was, I think you had 22 or 24 like meal swipes for the week. Right. All right. Uh, real quick, I guess I got to ask about your major, which yes. was, hang on, I, wrote, I wrote it down here. It was, it's risk management and insurance, yes. which sounds interesting to me. Uh, but 25 years ago, that would have sounded really boring to me. I won't mm -hmm. lie to you. Uh, you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. So I actually took like an introductory class my spring semester of last year. And I just really enjoyed the topics that my professor was talking about because he was a part-time professor at St. Joe's. Other than that, he worked in the industry full-time. And so he just said that if you're the type of person who doesn't like to sit behind a desk all the time and likes to like travel and interact with people and do business that way, then this is definitely a field that you should go ahead into. And then I also really like the actual actuarial science part of it because my senior year of high school, I took AP statistics with Mr. Bowlby. And for the most part, I liked it a lot. And now I'm taking another business statistics class. So I'm just finding it a lot more interesting. Wow. So despite having Bowlby as a teacher, you may end up as a success. That's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like having fun fun talking about Bowlby but no he's a great he's done great things with uh, AP he's really into AP statistics mm -hmm. took that over a couple years ago yes um that's good by the way you, you mentioned actuary and, mm -hmm. or actuarial is what you I don't think a lot of students actually know what that is do you want to talk about yeah. that for a second so actual actuarial science is like you look at statistic like analysis and you assess the risk and insurance and finance of a certain industry so more specifically, you can just go apply to any insurance company like health insurance, uh, what other, like car insurance and all that stuff. For car insurance, for example, would be like how often a person or a group of people within a population would get into an accident within like a certain age range. So you look at stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So like to, to, to make it really simple, um, everybody out there, if, if you apply for car insurance, you're going to pay more and it's through no fault of your own. It's because um, younger people, no matter how good a driver you are, younger people tend to be in more accidents. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not fair. Guess what? When I got married, my car insurance went down. That's ridiculous. But, you know, married men tend to be more stable. Um, so it's it's all based on statistics, like who in the past has been in more car accidents mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's the same thing with uh, homeowner's insurance, you know, the type of house you have, you know, is it more susceptible to a fire or whatnot. So um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of math and statistics behind the insurance industry. In fact, mm -hmm. that's what it's based on. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah. I like that right. a lot. I'm afraid to do this because, uh, I don't know how awake my homeroom is, but I would love to open this up to questions. If anybody has a question of Anna, because yeah, I think I've done ask. a great job. Yeah. <laughs> and and don't be afraid if you're still in bed because I think Anna's still kind of laying in bed there, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but she doesn't have class till 1220 oh. today. <laughs> yes, that's so nice. All right. Also, big advice, do not schedule an 8 a.m. Like try to yeah. avoid those. Those just aren't fun for anyone. Yeah, as we talk to a bunch of people at 749 in the morning, yeah. It's if you have fun. an eight, guys in college, if you have an 8 a.m. class, uh, you, uh, you'll you kind of walk to that class through an empty campus. There's not a lot of people stirring mm -hmm. at 8 a.m. on a college campus. And yes. In fact, Anna's first class is 1220. Um, th that is the best part about college is scheduling your class. You know, it's it's kind of a fun, usually do it towards the end of the semester before. And mm -hmm. I imagine now you just do it online, correct? Yes. So you don't have to wait in any lines, but you get a specific yeah. pick time and you have to log in at that certain time to yeah. choose your classes. Yeah. See, I, I was an athlete, so we, we actually got first dibs mm -hmm. because we had, to, now we had to be done by noon. So I... I had 8 a.m.s and night, you know, I was, my last class was probably when your class was starting because mm -hmm. we had to, you know, if we had a 3.30 game, uh, you know, in New Jersey, we had to leave at noon. So mm -hmm. it wasn't ideal. All right. So Anna, is there anything else you'd like to wrap up and you think the students here should know? Um, I think that's pretty much it. All, oh, actually one thing. One yeah. thing that Mr. Bowlby did like tell us to get when you go into college is get open up a credit card, but don't buy like stupid stuff on it, like buy your textbooks on it and then pay it off later and just use it for the textbooks because you're building your credit simultaneously while you do that. So that's one thing that I did when like going into college was I opened up a credit card and just used it for my textbooks. Yep. Yeah, you guys, uh, you build up a credit rating your whole life, and it uh, it affects your major purchases in life, your homes, your cars, all that stuff, and it mm -hmm. it follows you. You can't escape your credit rating. Um, so yeah, that's really good advice. You know, your your credit rating isn't good until you actually get credit, mm -hmm. and the way to get your credit rating up is to get take out like a small a credit card is like a small loan, and then just pay it off immediately. So yes. that's smart. Hey, Anna, I can't thank you enough. You get to go back to bed now because you don't have class for another three or four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I really owe you. No problem, Mr. Collins. The students on the West Coast, they want to do this, and they're like, well, I guess I have to get up at 4.30 a.m. I'm like, well, God bless you if you want to do that. Yeah, that's nuts. I could not. Yeah, I know. All right. Hey, I'm going to stop the recording here. Sounds good. But uh, thanks again. Hey, homeroom, uh, by the way, the only person I don't see is Tamir Garner and Aiden Cheng, unless Aiden, you better speak up now, because I, uh, who's here? I'm here. Oh, uh, you are? Oh, good, Aiden. I must have missed you early on. Sorry about that, bud. Tamir, are you here, Tamir, my man?